Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm doing a pen review and the pen is the Osprey Pens uh, Milano uh, and this is the Brown Ripple Ebonite Clipless Pen. This pen uh, was provided to me uh, by review through Osprey Pens and Pen Classics in New Zealand. Uh, the links to both of them are down below. Uh, this is a really interesting pen uh, and quite cool but also uh, not really entirely perfect either. I'll just go through a few basics sort of of the pen. Now this pen retails uh, in the US for around the 60 to 70 dollar mark to, uh, I believe um, and obviously the conversion rate differs wherever you are in the world. Um, and for that price I think it's an interesting pen and it's interesting for a couple of reasons uh, that I'll go into a little bit later. Um, but what you do get is a really nice looking pen. I actually really love the, the brown uh, Ripple Ebonite sort of finish. Um, it's got a great feeling um, and it's got a nice sort of vintage sort of look to it. It's a really interesting uh, shaped pen. I think it's got a, a really nice sort of profile and it's a really good size. Um, in, you know, in the hand it fits really quite nicely. What's interesting about this pen is that uh, the nib options that are available, it comes with a wide range of nibs and you, which you can purchase separately and I was also provided, as well as the fine nib that I've got in here, I was also provided with the, the Flex nib which is a, a Zebra G sort of style nib in a nib ha uh, housing unit. Uh, that you can easily screw out and swap in uh, and that makes this pen quite unique it gives it a flex way beyond what a lot of the modern flex pens allow yes the nibs do corrode uh, they're not designed to be in fountain pens but uh, with the unit you can get it makes it a lot easier to actually you know put the pen, uh, nibs into the pen the pen comes in a wide range of finishes. There's a plain black version, there's blue, there's a couple of other sort of ripple versions. Uh, and it's, you know, for its price, it's a pretty decent sort of uh, value pen. We'll look at it in a little bit more detail and I'll do a writing sample in a second. Um, but I want to just sort of uh, go through some of the features of the pen uh, first. So, as you can see, it's got a, a, basically a flat uh, top to it there uh, and screws to cap. Um, and you know it's a nice secure capping it also screws to post um, it's got some nice threads there on the end uh, the section is sort of hourglass uh, with threads at the top but they're so you don't really feel them at all when you're holding the pen that screwing to post mechanism makes it very very secure but it also makes it quite a long pen but because the pen is quite light uh, it really doesn't throw the balance out at all the balance of the pen is nice in the hand when it's uh, unposted, uh, it's sort of leading down towards the section um, and because as I said the cap is so light it only basically it, you only really feel a slight bit more weight in the in the end there uh, on the webbing of your hand. Um, okay so there's lots about this pen that I love and there's lots about this pen that I find a little bit problematic. What I love is the size and the feel in the hand and actually this fine nib writes quite nicely. It's a little bit sort of um, Feedbacky, but it's not sort of too bad. Uh, another feature that I quite like is that you can unscrew uh, the end of the pen here uh, to operate the converter. It is a cartridge converter pen. It can also be eyedropped. Uh, I choose to use the converter myself. Um, but here's a couple of the issues. So the converter that came with this pen basically exploded. Uh, leaked ink all through the pen and all through my bag um, and because this seal wasn't uh, entirely uh, closed off I got so, yeah I got some ink coming out the end there um, and it just didn't draw up ink it was just it was a yeah it just didn't work at all so that was that's the first issue I've replaced it with a standard sort of uh, converter uh, standard international and that's worked out really well um, the other issue is that it does have a few problems writing it's not it it, it dries out very quickly um, there's some hard starts uh, and it is a little bit dry for my taste uh, I might do a bit of work on this nib to make it a little bit wetter um, but I'd also need to smooth it out as well because there's a little bit of sort of feedback that um, 
I think if I opened up the tines a little bit more, we'd get a bit more feedback on the inside of the tines there. Um, it also, as I said, I, I got the flex nib option as well. That's going to get its own video because that has a whole range of problems that I haven't even started to cover yet. Um, so yeah, lots of good, a few things that need a bit of work. Um, we'll do a writing sample. I'll show you what that's like and show you some sort of more close up uh, images of bits of the pen. Uh, but yeah, this is the Osprey Milano. Um, I actually do like the pen and with this fine nib, I find it to be a really nice sort of daily writer sort of pen. Uh, but you'll see in the next video in a couple of weeks time, the flex nib and uh, some of the issues that arise from that. Now let's do the writing sample. Well, here the pen is in a little bit sort of closer detail. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's not a an overly sort of um, decorated pen. Uh, it, it's pretty sort of standard straight lines. Um, it, it screws uh, to a cap. Um, it's got a nice number six nib, and this is the fine, obviously, uh, branded there with Osprey uh, with a sort of a gold finish on it or gold colored finish, it's just a, a steel nib. Um, as I said, I like the way this, this nib writes. It's not the smoothest uh, nib, but it does write quite nicely, if a little bit dry. Uh, the section, as I said, is sort of hourglass and it fits nicely in the hand. It's, it's got a sort of a good diameter uh, to it. Uh, and the barrel of the pen is basically straight and then leads to this sort of um, section that you can sort of screw off here at the end to operate the converter. Uh, and has threads for posting there as well. As I said, this is a cartridge converter pen. Um, I have replaced the converter with a standard international converter here. Uh, the one that came with it, as I said, did not perform overly well at all. Um, what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of writing now with the pen, uh, and you can sort of see how it performs. Now, at the moment, I have this inked with Dymine Twilight, uh, which is this ink here, which is sort of a nice dusty, uh, dark blue colour, uh, sort of shades of teal and grey and all these sorts of things in it. It's a sort of a hard colour to, um, to really define, um, but uh, it's a really nice ink. Okay, so I write with this pen posted, even though it's long enough to write uh, without it posted. Uh, it does fit nice in the hand and the balance sort of feels okay. So here we have the The brown ripple finish. It is an ebonite pen, and it this has the fine steel nib. Um, this is actually writing pretty wet for this pen. Um, it does have a tendency to write dry, uh, but it's actually performing quite well. Um, it is very fine. Um, and you, you can sort of squeeze a little bit out, but that's sort of more ink going onto the page than sort of line variation. Uh, it is, you can hear that feedback there. It's sort of, um, it's not, it, it's smooth, so it's not scratchy, but there's a sort of a feedback, a pencil sort of like feedback, similar, I suppose, in a lot of ways to the, uh, the Platinum Century, uh, 3776 nibs. Um, oh, as I said, this ink is Diamine Twilight. Um, yeah, this pen does have a tendency to write dry uh, a lot of the time, but actually at the moment it's writing uh, pretty pretty wet. Um, well, wet for this pen. It lays down a sort of a decent amount of ink, so it is a fine, so you're not going to put down bucket loads uh, of ink, but it puts down more than enough. Uh, let's just do the little quote and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more.
So that's a little uh, quote from a poem by Charles Hamilton Sawley, who was a, a World War I a British poet. You can see here the pen is a pretty typical fine. It's a pretty rigid nib, but it performs well. It's a nice sort of everyday writer. I've had this pen inked with a couple of different inks for the last couple of months. I've actually tried to record this review several times, uh, but found it problematic for a number of reasons, which is why I'm separating the two nibs into two separate videos, because I think they really deserve their own. I like writing with this pen in the fine nib. As I said, the pen isn't perfect. It does dry out a little bit, um, and it has had some issues with the converter and all those sorts of things that I've already covered. But for the most part, this pen is it's a nice everyday writing pen, and for the price, uh, it's pretty good. Quick dimensions and all that sort of stuff. So, uncapped, uh, it's 12.9 centimeters long. Capped, it's 14.2. Uh, and posted, it's 16.6, .6, which is quite uh, a long uh, pen when it's posted. Just to put it into comparison with a couple of other uh, pens that are uh, on the market, here we have it alongside a Twisby Eco, uh, and here we have it alongside a Lamy Safari. So, you know, it's a pretty sort of standard size pen. It's a good size in the hand. Um, it performs well enough, uh, and I think if they could correct a few issues with, uh, say, the, the capping and the things like the converter, I think there's an issue with the converter seating uh, in the section as well. Um, as I said, it is eye-droppable, so you can avoid that altogether, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure it sort of, it entirely engages uh, securely in there either. So yeah, I, I, I said I like the pen. If it was a little bit wet, I might do a little bit of work just to get it a little bit wetter. Uh, I think it'd be great, uh, but it performs well and, you know, in this price range and everything, I think it's actually a pretty decent pen. Well, I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe uh, to my channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please drop me a message. You can do that either here on YouTube or uh, on any of my social media platforms, which are linked down below, or drop me an email to the address listed below. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy your writing, and I'll talk to you later.